So I had this idea for writing in the canyon uh, probably two years ago. Um, and then once I put it together and get word out to people and plan the first gathering. Um, so I think maybe November last it year I started. Yeah. And we had four people on that first. We're all here. Charles, Janet, Ash, and I. And um, so there's a great picture in the chat book of the four of us because that was the first crew and kind of the core. Um, we've had many others join us. Marge has joined us. Philip has joined us. Um, Michelle got in on one. Michelle and I took the tram to the top and then walked mm -hmm. out and stopped. I think at Stop Eight and did some writing. Um, so we tried a lot of different things. It was super hot for a couple of months this summer. So we went to the headwaters of Sabino Creek. We went up Mount Lemon and had two gatherings up there that were wonderful. They made the mistake of listening to me when I said, let me show you this short side trip. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. We liked it. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Yeah, uh, a couple months ago. I, I'd been talking about doing a reading probably for the last six or nine months, and I finally got my act together for that. <laughs> and um, then I was like, we need to have a chat book. And I was like, yeah, it'll just be some funky photocopy thing. But it really turned out nice. So I'm Thank excited you. about yeah. it. I'm like, Thank you. I'm a publisher. Yes, you are. Yeah. So. I'm walking away as a published poet today, and that's yeah. pretty exciting. <laughs> so, hey, come to at least one gathering this year. You'll be in the second annual. So, and I'm thinking about, like, how can we meet the needs of more people? Can there be some, you know, shorter, and also some longer, like, maybe once or twice a year really do a longer walk um, that phone line link loop that's like I don't know Could close to overnight or on top of the mountain in the middle of summer yeah all kinds of things so um, anyway um, our sponsor uh, we're sort of under the umbrella of pog poetry so Charles can tell you more I can tell you more about pog we have a reading series um, there's flyers somewhere yeah. okay take a flyer with you for upcoming readings from this year it's mostly accurate it's mostly <laughs> accurate you can always go to pogartstucson.org for more up-to-date details and and that is actually in the back of the chat book so you got that there and um, yeah, Sabino Poets is a thing. We're going to keep it going. And let's have our... Do you want to read your first in the chat book? Do you want to read first? Sure. We bring you Philip. This was uh, spring, right? Right on the yeah. creek, just, just up above the dam. It was a magical morning with sounds of water and uh, working around us and lots of winged activity yeah. and magnificent colors and uh, something was blooming. Was it the acacia? Something was really, oh, really... yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. It was the acacia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that alone was enough to take you into a whole other dimension. And then when you add the gifts of the poets to it, it's a day that you just take for a lifetime. So mine is called Just Breathe. The magic of this day on Sabino Creek transcends our logical, rational side of the brain. The webs, the haze, the fog, worries melt as the aroma, aroma of the acacia bloom takes us to another place and time. We are invited to join the world of nature's perfect web where goddess expresses her truth, her divinity, her gift, to all creation. Just breathe, listen, 
Feel the wonder of nature manifesting all around us. The lessons, the belonging, the peace, the balm our souls are so hungry for. Nice. Oh, I'll get around to that. That's all. On, that's all on the, the video. All of our talking. <laughs> so um, the next poem in here, Bavispe, uh, was one of our prompts. The prompts are totally optional, so they can be happily ignored. Um, but this time, I was thinking about how they say that a lot of the boulders in Sabino Canyon say that a lot of the boulders in Sabino Canyon are a result of this 1887 earthquake in northern Mexico. And um, so it was quite an event. And the dust that was raised in the Catalinas, you know, like you couldn't see the mountains for a week or something. It was pretty amazing. And all these mountains in southern Arizona. So Bavispe was the center of that earthquake in Sonora. Bavispe, an Opata word, I think, founded in 1645, place where the river changes direction. The way the quake in 1887 changed water levels, dried up springs, created new ones, perhaps the river has changed direction more than once. What could the Opata tell us? What could the settlers, the Atom, the Chiricahua Apache tell us about tumbling boulders, the fires, the before and after in this canyon, so many canyons, treasured wild space, cherished like my own backyard? And this is one of my earlier poems before we even were gathering. I wrote this about Sabino. Today, Sabino Creek, a wash of liquid minerals, flecks of gold, patches of sky, pine, without plan or thought, wearing away tiny garnets from granite, fairy faceted, pale amber sound of canyon breeze. Every day cannot have a gift of bighorn sheep, but it can be all this, scarcely contained in one heart. It was before it. Before it. You know, I was still looking. I spent about, I don't know, over 40 years <laughs> looking. <laughs> As I walk into Sabino, like there's certain places, like there should just be a bighorn sheep there, you know, up on that rock. <laughs> so like, I was always like, yeah, that's where, that's where one of them should be. And people would tell me, well, yeah, you might see one in upper Sabino, but you're not gonna see one down here. Well, July, a year ago, July, I, um, reminds me to turn off my phone. Um, I came in, it was about six in the morning, still kind of dark, so I don't have like the best picture. But I looked up, I was at like the one mile marker. I looked up and there was those horns. There was that big horn sheep standing there. I was like, oh my God. So haven't seen one since, but oh my God, it was I think amazing. I must have a little more imagination here because it seems like I see one every time I come into the park. <laughs> Those cheese. Here's that sheep whisperer, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Yeah, John. Yeah. So I saw a bighorn sheep one time on my birthday. Oh, oh on your what? Awesome. On, on my birthday. And, <laughs> and where this were you? Pretty low. Oh. And it was a really long time ago, though. Streamside, the headwaters of Sabino Creek, 
small green flowered orchids bloom. I'd wanted to see them for years. Thrush song and red breasted nuthatches have come down from the mountain. The way down looks too slippery and steep. The creek doesn't mind. Flows down impossible layers of time, tumbling perfect sitting rocks and leaving garnets behind. Above occasional pools, there is more bird song and the whispering of lonely cottonwood leaves. The plants would like something more from you. Spiny desert lizards hold their sunny boulders close. And you who were raised by this creek, elderberries, adventures, and a few bitter canyon grapes stand sunlit, offering almonds, raisins, tea, and company. Maybe you should introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Ash Hook. Uh, that's my pseudonym. Um, my name is Angela Hill, but I have had this poet name for a while now, and that's what I entered this group as, and I love it. I love being able to use that. I'm a public school teacher. I teach high school English. Um, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot right now. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So it's, I love Sabino Canyon and um, I've been, I've lived mm -hmm. in Tucson for 11 years, but the last, I would say five or six, I was looking for poetry people and found good poetry people. Love this group so much. So. All right, uh, this one's called The Unconsciousness of Dehydration. Being made mostly of water, I take my chances daily against evaporation. Wandering through the desert chambers of a heart that somehow keeps on beating, keeps on loving, somehow keeping me alive. A dehydrating heart sending water's oxy oxygen bits to my blood roots, sacrificing in her thirstiness, feeding extremities first, allowing for blooming even in drought. Like the Gila Chub swimming in shrinking pools, I await elusive monsoons while dreading looming hungry raccoons, hoping for seasonal salvation. One of our prompts was about the Gila Chub, right? Right. That was so. Then I just like through the metaphor of being Gila Chub, I'm de dehydrating a little bit. Uh, this was the same day the one that I the next one's called Homage. It was the same day that Philip you wrote that poem. We both wrote goddess poems that day. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> the goddess was alive. Yes, mm. it's called Homage. The Sonoran Desert Goddess manifests peals of petaled laughter, Choya's burnt sienna crispness, seductive paper lantern blooms calling nectar drinkers, Datura blooming in glory, sacrament of the tiny crawly, dewdrops of creosote, future seedlings glowing from fern frond leafy shadow. Old man mesquites, praying prostrate, broken barked fingers brushing earth. The choir of bees drone amidst bird call cacophony to running water's percussion. I don't remember how to say this. Pyroloxia. Pyroloxia. <laughs> Pyroloxia mama, settling into her sentinel watching. Flitting joyful jet throat sparrows, playful as children <coughs> amongst cardinal crimson flash. Honeyed acacia opening my mind like sky through some subliminal forget forgottenness. The clutching tangledness of this semester's end unraveling in her blessings. And I am drenched, free to worship her here. I learn about birds 
and plants from Janet and Lisa. I love it because I don't know them here very well. There's a great teacher at my school that does a um, field studies class and I want to take it because then she would teach me all this stuff and I wouldn't have to learn it on my own. But anyway. So this next one is my brother. He's a poet from uh, New Hampshire and uh, he submitted this upon request. Okay. He was on our November gathering. Dawn in the Catalinas by Andrew Perio. The pink light of a diorama, its small dramas awash, warmed. Here in the canyon, it's everywhere, coating pinion pines, sainted saguaros, the shining robes of phinopeplas. Wish we could bottle it to release as needed, like some fan dancer, lush and lit in the sear air of June. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Andrew. Andrew is a puppet dancer. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Lisa for inviting me that one day I participated. You'll be back. Now I will, yeah. <laughs> it's fun. We were conveyed here. My mother had two bodies, one to wear quickly, one to bear pain. Erosion, until the other one had concave memory. Evaporation, until the first did not exist. She took the first one with her into the canyon and left the other one here for me reflected in this temporary pool. My mother has two formations. One is igneous and hard that holds the beginning in fire before record everywhere. She rose into mountain. One is sedimentary and porous that holds fossils that floated down current. Extinctions layered and folded into thin history that only she can retell. Who was that? Am I up? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. David Navarro. David. I guess I could read you David's know. poem. Okay. That was Michelle Worthington, by the way. This is a poem by David Navarro. Um, couldn't be with us today. He's been on a couple of walks. It's called Words. Many seeds of actions are planted deep within a black leather easy chair, worn with lined creases beside the tall bookshelf. <laughs> a little play on William Carlos Williams. Just yeah. pointed at me. Uh, or not. <laughs> I'm Charles Alexander. Um, sometime during those er, first months, uh, uh, a good friend who used to live here, Mark Weiss, passed away, and I started thinking about things I shared with him, and I know he loved the desert, even though he moved from here and then lived uh, most of his later life in New York, right next to the only uh, first growth forest left on Manhattan. <laughs> if you think that's not possible, go up to Inwood Park and you'll see. <laughs> so here, where? For Mark Weiss, 1943 to 2023. Mark, I wish I could have, or would have, walked with you. Here where today the waters run from higher than Bear Canyon into and over dams and shadowy light cast on tumbled rock faces, above and below old and young saguaro. The ash are bare cottonwood leaves persist, water, constant sound, everything moves every day. Here where in 1887 the earthquake shook the rock and made it fall and jumble over and through until the townsfolk beheld clouds of dust, and south on the Rio Sonora 
small towns all but disappeared over the shifting plates. Old cold hand flow to icy fingers and thick ink. Thick ink makes fat obtruded letters. A language has its own freezes and flows and disappears in the rubble. Though the light here speaks with the water, sound of renewal. Mark, you would love being here. The wet ink, the thick wet ink we share. Okay. And, and I was greedy, I have two poems in here, so do I? I did too. I had two. Oh, you, you so read two? Okay, good. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I the it's best one. <laughs> so this is uh, some incidents, and it's a list. One, the floods in the mountains of Catalina. Two, Flood Avenue, one block away from my childhood home, Norman, Oklahoma. Three, Big Water, Falling Water. Four, the names we give to the waters. Five, the names we give to what happens to the waters. Six, rain, flood, overflow, surge, spill. Seven, names are sounds, are letters, are combinations of morphemes. Eight, waters morph the landscape, change the planet. Nine, no water ever the same. Ten, no steps twice or again to come. Eleven, floods. Twelve, water. Thirteen, over the bridge. Fourteen, water moves history. Fifteen, no stops allowed. Sixteen, materials of flow. Seventeen, no stasis. Eighteen, any present seen from the present fades before thought about the present. Nineteen, only the future exists, and it only exists in the present from the past. Twenty, we have no language for our inability to be. Twenty-one, in time, inevitability, only to be time. Twenty-two, time floods. Up here, right? Or do we have any more? Oh, yeah, your bird list. Bird, you want to read your bird list? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's probably some things that didn't get on here because we but didn't really keep since. it uh, every yeah. time we it's watched true. Here, so it was kind of it was reconstituted. Re just added the water. Pressure just blew down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was landed. Black-throated sparrow. Rufus Wing Sparrow, White Crown Sparrow, Canyon Tohe, Aver's Tohe, Cactus Wren, Rock Wren, Northern Cardinal, Curfield Thrasher, Morning Dove, White Winged Dove, Gila Woodpecker, Ladderback Woodpecker, Broadbill Hummingbird, Northern Mockingbird, Plain of Pepla, Pyroluxia, Burden, Summer Tanager, Bell's Vario, Gamble's Quail, Raven, Red Tailed Hawk, Roadrunner, Turkey Vulture, Cooper's Hawk. So, um, yes. yeah, I'm yeah. really excited about this chat book. Thanks for everybody's oh, additions to it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I'm 